This isn't what you were expecting, is it? You were looking for two dashingly handsome men, presenting you the news from the automotive world in such brilliant ways. Well, I'm sad to inform you that, in fact, Rich is ill. He can't be with us today as he's on his sick bed with a chest infection. But he has sent us this wonderful message. Greetings. I'm unwell. I've got man flu. <coughs> Anyway, one bit of news I can bring you. Rolls-Royce have just released some press shots of the new Phantom. Does anybody else think it looks like Bender from Futurama from the front end? Of course, that just could be me and the fever kicking in and a bit of delirium that goes with it. Anyhow, have a look, see what you think. Ciao. Rich, we wish you the best of health and we hope you get better soon. I need you back. I'm not the same without you. But he makes a valid point. On the 27th of July, Rolls-Royce announced this, the new Phantom. And when we say new, we mean wholly new. It is lighter, it is stiffer, it is quieter, and it's technologically the most advanced Rolls-Royce ever made. And it has taken elegance and luxury up to a completely new height. I love the headlamps. I love this colour scheme, actually, as well. I just think it looks absolutely brilliant. This has the new feature called Embrace, which is what I love about Rolls. Um, they have these wonderful terms for these different things that the cars can do. So the Embrace mode is as your guest or whoever sits in the car, your personal chauffeur or valet can just graze a sensitive point on the door handle and the doors will close by themselves effortlessly. Also with this model is, uh, for the first time in 100 years, they've completely redeveloped the dashboard, essentially, but they call it the gallery. It looks great. Yes, it's very expensive. And yes, it has a remarkably big engine. It's actually a 6.75 litre twin turbo V12, 12 cylinders. It's a beast, beast of a car. Love what Rolls-Royce are doing. Love the design, love the fact that Rolls are trying to redefine what elegance and luxury means. But let us know your thoughts in the comments box below. So let's get Rich's thoughts on this car. Rich, what do you think? <coughs> I thought as much. Now let's move on from a V12 behemoth to the announcement from Tesla this week that the first 30 cars of the new Model 3 have been released. Now these 30 cars are assigned to predominantly Tesla employees as far as we're aware. Um, but here it is, not a bad looking car. And it's not just 30 people that are getting this car, half a million people have put down a deposit to buy one of these. And it's not hard to see why. Don't forget, Tesla make the Model S, which is the car that can do 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. It's a five-door car, for goodness sake, not a purpose-built sports car. Now, this new model can do 0 to 60 in 5.6 seconds, has a top speed of 130 miles an hour, and a range of 220 miles. And they've designed this car predominantly as the first mass market electric car. They're hoping to see a lot of these on the road. The price point for the UK is set at around 26 and a half grand for the base model. You can spend an extra $9,000, I'm not sure what that is in pounds, um, and get a longer distance battery for the car, which extends it to 310 miles range um, and gives you a higher top speed of 140 miles an hour. But uh, fair play to Tesla, they're staying on the cutting edge as they always are and uh, we're bound to see a lot of these on the road. But I'd be curious to know what you guys think of this. Um, and also let's find out what Rich thinks. Rich, what do you think of the Model 3? I've got man flu. Bless his cotton socks. But anyway, from current established electric car technology to looking ahead. Now obviously this is going to be a very exciting time for manufacturers. They're going to be coming out with new concepts new designs, pushing the ideas of where electric cars can go. And it's not often that I get a little bit aroused when I think about Renault. But they've come out with this. Ooh. What do we think? This 
is the Zoe E. It's a concept car developed by Renault. And the fun thing was the design team were given one premise. Have fun. And I think they've done that really, really well. They've done it in partnership or with the inspiration from Formula E, where they are proven successors. They've been doing it since 2014 or thereabouts. Um, and the colour scheme and uh, some of the technology is all taken and drawn from uh, the Formula E success. I really love the look of this car. It's a two-seater. It has twin electric motors and it produces 340 kilowatts of power. That's otherwise known as 460 brake horsepower equivalent. It can do 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.2 seconds and it has a top speed of 130 miles an hour. I think it's a great looking car. That interior is completely bonkers, but I love it. It's angular and curvy at the same time. If this is the direction that Renault are going, if this is the direction that other manufacturers will go in terms of creating cars that people will be like, cool, I'd love to own one of those, then uh, let's embrace it. And I, for one, think it's a fabulous thing. Now, Rich, tell me what you think of this car. Anyway, last point of the day is where we answer your YouTube questions. If you have any, drop them to us at the comments box just below this video. And last week's Two Chaps News provoked this response from Jonathan Hill, who asks, what are our thoughts on the Jaguar XKSS and what are our thoughts on restoration? Um, if you haven't heard, Jaguar in recent years have been rebuilding the legendary 1950s car, the XKSS. Now, if you haven't looked, Channel 4 have a, a mini documentary series based on this. It's still on demand. What do we think of it? We... Rich and I both love the idea of preserving and promoting motoring history, whatever shape or form it comes in. Um, and the XKSS was a fantastic looking car, a fantastic sounding car. And uh, yeah, we're all for it. In terms of restoration in general, Mr. Richard Hinton owns this. This is Rich's 1970s MG Midget. And it looks in a bit better condition here than it does at the minute, currently in his garage not running very well. But don't worry, we're going to do a mini-series where, you know, he works on getting the car back on the road again, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this week's Two Chaps News. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little watermark bottom right-hand side of your screen. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the box below this video and we'll be bringing you a new episode next week. So stay tuned for more car reviews and more car news. But for now, it's bye-bye.